the next chapter in the story of a romance novelist charged with murder. New evidence linking Nancy Brophy to the culinary school where her chef husband was gunned down and her questionable internet search history. Also, why the man convicted of killing the head of Oregon's Department of Corrections could soon walk free after nearly 30 years in prison. And 30 minutes until tip-off. The Blazers hope to keep the playoff winning streak alive tonight in enemy territory. How Voodoo Donuts is trying to give Rip City a leg up. KGW News at 6 starts now. And we'll start with secrets revealed. In a treasure trove of documents that outline the case against a romance novelist charged with murdering her own husband. Nancy Brophy's husband was a beloved chef and teacher at the Oregon Culinary Institute. Let's get right to it. KGW investigative reporter Kyle Aboshi is here. And Kyle, you've been sifting through that stack of documents all day. Right, and here's a look at those one secret documents, including several search warrants and all hundreds of pages of court documents were unsealed today, revealing how police used surveillance video and a handgun to help link a romance novelist to her husband's alleged murder. A search of Nancy Brophy's iTunes account showed she'd bookmarked an article titled 10 Ways to Cover Up a Murder, according to the court documents. The 68-year-old is charged with killing her husband on June 2, 2018. Daniel Brophy, a beloved instructor at the Oregon Culinary Institute, was found shot and killed in the kitchen. There was no sign of forced entry and nothing was stolen. The documents indicate Nancy Brophy recently bought a Glock 9mm handgun. Shell casings found at the crime scene appeared to come from a Glock, say police, although not the same weapon she'd purchased. At the time of her arrest in September, police say Brophy asked, you're arresting me? Then went on to say, you must think I murdered my husband. Brophy is pleading not guilty in this case. Fascinating details. Kyle, you also mentioned surveillance video. Do police have her on video? Indeed, they do. Uh, the court records show that Nancy Brophy can be seen on surveillance video driving her minivan around the area around the time of the murder. In fact, the documents suggest she was seen just outside of KGW. As you know, our studios are not right near the Culinary right. Institute, so not surprising. And it also mentioned life insurance. What can you tell us about that? Right, that's a big red flag according to investigators. Detectives say Brophy is the beneficiary on several of her husband's life insurance policies valued at over $350,000. And in the months following his death, police say she tried to cash in. Certainly worth noting that we reached out to her defense attorney and didn't hear back today. Yeah, not surprising. Be interesting right. to follow this case. Thank you, yeah. Kyle. Now to some big questions surrounding a historic first for TriMet. The agency this week issued its first ever lifetime ban barring a serial sex offender from riding a bus or the max. Tonight, we wanted to know how is this ban actually going to work? KGW's Maggie Vespa joins us now. And Maggie, TriMet says it's still trying to figure that out. Yeah, Laurel, that's right. TriMet says they don't know at this point if maybe drivers and operators will have Jared Walter's photo on them going forward. Maybe they'll just post them on buses or max trains so everyone can see them. Or maybe they'll have transit police and fare inspectors carry that photo around. They say there is a very specific reason, by the way, that they're taking their time with all of this. To put it simply, Jared Walter is behind bars with bail set at $50,000. TriMet doesn't think he's getting out anytime soon, so they're in no rush to figure out the details of their first ever lifetime ban. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think he needs to be on the train or the bus. It's a consensus that comes after Walter was charged with inappropriately touching two women riding public transit last month. Those would be his 17th and 18th victims. He's had several convictions, some including cutting or doing lewd things to women's hair, a pattern that's earned him the nickname the TriMet Barber. Writers tonight, while grateful for the ban, want to know how it's being enforced. I would say you get the word out to as many people as humanly possible. You know, they send emails to me all the time about, you know, system outages or things that are down or, you know, send it out to everybody so everybody knows. TriMet tonight says they're weighing a lot, including driver and operator safety. They don't want them tasked with stopping a banned passenger and getting hurt. Drivers told me off camera TriMet emailed them the press release, but that's it. No photo of Walter and no instructions. They wonder what will happen if Walter gets out of jail with no plan in place. Riders have the same question. And so they might have to then um, 
possibly they would put that photo out there. But if they had done that earlier, it would have been better. Now, TriMet says they are working with the DA's office on this, and if Walter is scheduled to be released on bail, they will speed up this process. One impact of this ban that is for sure already at this point is that if Walter is caught on public transit again, he will be charged with trespassing and interfering with public transportation. Back to you. Thank you, Maggie. And we want to know your thoughts in a KGW Viewer Voice poll tonight. Are you satisfied with how TriMet handled the case of Jared Walter? Yes or no? You can vote at KGW.com slash vote or on your KGW app. Just click on that tile that says Viewer Voice. The man charged with carjacking and killing a man in Kent, Washington, admitted to police that he used the victim's own gun. A police report says the 23-year-old suspect, who hasn't been named yet, shot Jared Sperling on Tuesday after stealing his truck while it was idling. The report goes on to say the shooter was high on narcotics when it happened. He told police he found a gun in the center console of the truck and used it to shoot Sperling. Police found Sperling's body the next day in the bed of the truck. The suspect's bail is set at $1 million. We are just minutes away from Rip City tipping off in enemy territory against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Blazers are up two games over OKC, and they hope to make it three tonight. Let's get right to it. KGW's Orlando Sanchez is here. Orlando, Blazers are on a roll. Yeah, does it feel like there's a bit of Blazers fever going on oh, right now? There's a big fever, mm -hmm. yeah. Especially when you go up 2-0 in the series. Almost everywhere you go, people are talking about the Portland Trail Blazers. And Hall of Famer Charles Barkley, he's also on board. I, I think they've been, they've been the most underrated team in the NBA all year. I'm going with the Portland Trail Blazers to win the West. Not only does he have the Blazers beating the Thunder, but he's got them winning the entire West. Wow. But they've got a long way to go before that happens. The Blazers have to prove that they can win on the road. They haven't won a playoff road game away from the Moda Center since 2016. Oklahoma City has a reputation for having one of the best crowds in the league. And as Cantor even said, he expects it to be crazy in there. Odds makers in Vegas favor OKC by eight points. Damian Lillard knows his team has to play even better than it did in Portland to have a 2-0 lead in the series. Here's what he told NBC Sports Northwest during today's pregame shoot-around. Everybody say, you know, we love shutting the crowd up and everybody against us and all that, but um, the truth is it's a challenge. You know, it's easier to play at home than it is on the road. That's just the truth. And for us, we got to be tough enough to to bring that same focus and energy on the road with us and, and get a big win. And the focus has been on defense and communication, especially in a loud arena. Defense always travels with you, even when the shots aren't falling on the road. Oklahoma City has been awful, historically bad, shooting the three-pointer through the first couple of games. If that trend continues, the likelihood that Portland goes up 3-0 in this series is so strong. We are less than 30 minutes from tip-off. We will have highlights and reaction from the Blazers coming up at 11 o'clock. I knew I liked Charles Barkley. Yeah. I know. I like Barkley knows, prediction. right? Yeah. A lot of Rip City is filling what Charles Barkley <laughs> has to one. say yeah. right now. Fingers crossed. Thank you, Orlando. <laughs>